is that you love God and love your family and love others well. That's all. It's a simple life. We're a simple people with a simple calling. And it's beautiful. The beauty is the simplicity. Well, in order to do this, you know, it's going to require some planning. We call that budgeting. I know a lot of people are like, oh, budgeting, man, it's a B word. It should be a cuss word or whatever, you know. Um, and even people who budget, a lot of times, like, yeah, I made a budget. Oh, where is it? It's like on some Word document, you know, saved somewhere. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And, and, the, and then we go, oh, man, the Bible doesn't talk about budgeting. But here's the deal. The Bible talks about planning. And plan, budgeting is just planning. And, and you should have a plan for the different aspects of your life. And it doesn't have to be so detailed that you have like this graph on your wall and every area of your life is detailed out with a little plan and step by step, day by day, month by month, whatever. But in the areas that you want to get, uh, that you feel God laying on your heart, that you want to grow in, you need to make, you need to make a plan. Proverbs 21, 5 says this, the plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. So he's talking about a plan that won't lead to poverty. So we're talking about a budget, right? He says, I'm making a plan, and the plan of the wise keep them from ending up in poverty. Um, you need to get a plan together so that you can live your simple life of faith, enjoy life, and not end up with this weight and this pressure on your life that the majority of our culture is feeling. Proverbs, also speaking of plans, in 15.22 says this, Without consultation, plans are frustrated, with, but with many counselors, they succeed. As it relates to money or any other issue where you don't excel at, find someone who does. Get counsel. Find someone who does well at an area of your weekend and learn from them. Um, the fact is, in this church, there are people who are strong in most any area that you could find. And if you want to find someone who's weak in just about any area, you could find them in this church. And so the question isn't going to find someone who's strong in all areas. You're not going to find someone in this church or any other church who's strong in all areas. Because the world's been a little short of perfect people for about 2,000 years. But you can find someone who's strong where you're weak, and you can learn from them, and you can gain counsel, and you can put together a plan. Um, so what happens is, if we're not careful, we can start judging others who aren't strong where we're strong. And then we can rationalize our weaknesses as though they're really insignificant and not as important. That's what self-righteous people do. If you're not strong where they're strong, they're going to treat you poorly. But where they're weak, they're going to have every rationalization and excuse why that doesn't apply to them or why that doesn't impact who they are. What we want to be is people who assess our weaknesses and our strengths, who are seeking to overcome our weaknesses and use our strengths to bless people. Um, and so in this, it's better to be humble than to get humble. But one of the two is going to happen. You're either going to be humble or you're going to get humble. And it's a lot better to be humble because sometimes, well, it's a lot better to be humble and get out of a hole than to stay in a hole because of our pride. And that's what keeps us in a hole. But not only do you need to make a plan and seek counsel for that plan, Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. You need to put together a budget and you make a plan, whether it's finances or whatever, you need to come up with a plan, get counsel from somebody who does well in that. They may be weak in every other area, but they do well in that. Whatever it is, get some counsel, and then commit that plan to the Lord. Take it to the Lord and say, God, my goal is to honor you, to love you, to follow you, to live a simple God and others focused life. Here's my plan. I'm committing it to you, and and bring it to him after you compare it with Scripture and ask for his blessing on it. Psalm 127, 1 through 2 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain to build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labor, for he gives to his beloved even in their sleep. You know God can take care of your problems while you sleep restfully well? That's faith, isn't it? It's saying, 
God has it. I'm okay. I'm going to sleep tonight. And when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to keep working the plan that I've come up with, with counsel, and that I've committed myself to, and that I've committed to the Lord. And I'm going to sleep well, and I'm going to keep working the plan. Um, then, the trick is stay in the course. Proverbs 15, 21 says this. Folly is joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding walks straight. After you've come up with a plan, your counsel, by comparing it to God's word, you've taken it to God, you've committed to him, you're trusting that he alone can help you work this plan, then you need to stay on course. We said that a lot of people have budgets, they don't follow, they don't remember what they were, they're tucked away here or there. you got to stay in straight course. you got to keep going. And the reason that's difficult is because there's Starbucks on every corner, right? The reason it's difficult to stay on course is because when you stop at the gas station, they've got all kinds of snacks there that don't fit in your budget. Uh, the reason it's difficult to stay the course is because you walked through the mall last week. I don't know about you. I can walk through the mall, and I didn't go needing a single thing. And I came out needing, like, a whole handful of things. Or for me, it's more like REI or something, man. I try to avoid that place because we can't afford it anyways, but I can always walk out of there with something that I, my flesh is telling me i got to have. Uh, the fact is, be careful. Staying the course financially to live a simple God and others focused life takes real discipline. You've got to walk a straight course, don't you? And that's tough. None of us find that easy. But impulse buying will kill you. Um, so pay your taxes, give to the Lord, come up with a plan for the remainder that puts your need, that takes care of your needs and the needs of your family, that blesses others, and that plans long term. Where, where does that stuff go real practically? It goes to your housing. The rule of thumb is not to spend more than one-third of your salary on housing. That includes your mortgage, your taxes, your utilities, all of that. You're like, man, that would be like a cardboard box, right? Uh, Whatever it is, if you overspend in certain areas, you handicap your ability to live a, a peaceful life, don't you? You handicap your ability to participate and be a blessing to others. Um, so we, housing's huge. Food, if you were to think about how many thousands of dollars of food go down your throat each year, uh, that's a bunch, isn't it? Food is a huge expense. And what happens is, instead of taking Ecclesiastes route, a route of wisdom that says, hey, I'm going to live a conservative life, and then I'm going to have feasts, I'm going to have times where I'm just going to celebrate, and I'm going to have a great, huge meal with friends and family, and instead we reverse that. And so when it comes time for the holidays, what is it? Everyone's got their dieting techniques. How not to eat much food? And you know, I'll do this and don't do that. And you're going, come to the holidays, man. Eat, man. Blow up party, man. You celebrate big things in life. Have a big feast. You know what Jesus is going to throw us? A huge feast. And, and you know what he's not going to have? When you're walking in, the rules of how not to eat much, you know, drink a lot of water before you come in, and, and stand five feet away from anything that tempts you. You know what I mean? Just go and eat. And have fun, right? But what happens is that requires that we live a simple life day by day so that we have the money to throw a feast. And when we have a feast, we're not going, here's the tips on how to diet during the holidays. Are you nuts? The holidays are, our holidays are festive. It's, it's graduation. It's birthday. It's, there's some times where you just want to have a big feast. And that's what Proverbs says. Have a big feast with friends and family. But be careful that you day to day that you're being wise because otherwise it's going to suck down a lot of, a lot of money. Transportation, another huge expense. Um, we often think because of the lust of the flesh and the boastful pride of life, we, uh, we're like, you, you know, you are what you drive. Well, I'm a Porsche. Oh, I'm a Taurus. I'm like, everyone thinks they are what they drive, you know. And, uh, just drive something, right, that, that gets you from, you know, and and, uh, and if you want to have fun with it, I do. I bought a 2000 dollars truck, and I ripped the top of the doors off, and I stuffed these big mud tires on. We'll talk about that in the manliest section coming up. Um, and you know what? I get soaked every time it rains. I fry every time it's hot, and I freeze every time it's cold, and I have so much fun. And, you know, so my $2,000 beater uh, is just a blast. You know, you can have fun with it. But live cheap, right? Live cheap. You don't spend all your money on these things. Uh, because 
Proverbs 22, 7 says this. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower becomes slave to the lender. You only want to have one master. It's Jesus. You want to be able to say, hey, I want to follow Jesus. If he calls me here or there, I don't have to wait around to pay off debts. You know how many missionaries go to get ready for missions, and one of the biggest things they find, one of the biggest difficulties, is actually getting out of debt. It may take them years. So they have this calling and desire. I want to go to be, I want to be a missionary here or there. And they're like, hey, most mission organizations won't accept you if you have debt. And so they spend a long, long time trying to get themselves back out of a hole. Well, wisdom says don't get in the hole. Or if you're in the hole, make a plan to get out of the hole. And then when Jesus calls and directs you, you don't have to worry about it. Um, Proverbs 13, 22 says this. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. You need a plan to be able to do that, don't you? I want to help my kids. I don't want them to start off in debt. I want to help them get through school. I like to help them um, uh, with the down payment on a house or whatever it is. Uh, I want to be in a position to help my kids. We have been mightily blessed by our family to 